What's up, nerds and geeks? My name is OMG, WTF, LOF, WBRB, better known as the future of professional wrestling, Stephen Pym. With me here, I have a good friend of mine. He's also known as the Greek god of professional wrestling, John Olympian, my uh -huh. good friend. Uh, we're here to do a review just similar to like the same thing I did with Chris with uh, Monday Night Raw. Uh, this time we're going to be reviewing Monday Night Raw, and we're also hoping to uh, continue on with reviewing ROH and... Um, I think that's actually the only two. May, may, may I well. interject? Go right ahead. This time we were reviewing Lucha Underground, not Monday Night Raw. Did I say Monday Night Raw? You you said Monday Night Raw. That was my bad. Yeah, we are. That we're, wasn't we, your bad. That was my bad. That's what I said. I could have swore you said wasn't. I don't know, man. Maybe I'm saying things that I don't think I'm saying. Either way, <laughs> I could just start this recording over. No, 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 no. Yeah, whatever. Fine, I'll leave it in. We're reviewing uh, Lucha Underground and. Hopefully with Johnny, I'm going to be covering uh, Lucha Underground and ROH, and then he's going to hopefully join me and Chris with the pay-per-views as well. Um, I don't know if uh, Johnny's going to join me with any other wrestling stuff. That's all up to him if he wants to watch other stuff. <clears throat> so, Lucha Underground, it's going to be a little bit different than the uh, Monday Night Raw things, because like with, um, with Lucha Underground and ROH, uh, even Impact and NXT to an extent... Um, it's a lot shorter than Monday Night Raw, so there's not a lot to cover, like the Raw Just episodes Just to put it are. in perspective, how many matches were there on Raw? I think there... Oh, God. Uh, four or five. Yeah, there's only three in Lucha Underground, but then, like, how many segments do you have? Like, Lucha yeah, Underground had, like, one small segment where yeah, they talked Raw about things. Yeah, Raw has, like, eight. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so it's... So it's, it's going to be a lot shorter. It's not going to be super long, but we're going we're gonna to try to keep it entertaining and try to... Not only that, but I, I'd like to really highlight the the Lucha Underground ones and the ROH and all, not, a little bit of the independence to try to help get those names out there as well. You know, get yeah. more people watching the programs. Yeah. Um. And this episode was like a little, it was a little interesting mm -hmm. because it Lucha Underground's nice. entire style is high flying, fast paced kind of stuff, and there was really only one high flying, fast paced kind of match. Yeah, they'd stepped but, out of their uh, bounds. But, but the problem is, it was the first match. Um, mm -hmm. One of the guys that looked like he really he got hurt like early on, like he like took a hip yeah. toss or something, and then he was limping the rest of the match. So they really like so this is like an interesting episode. Like, yeah, the first it, match if you're gonna on. listen to this, and then you might be like, oh, I might shy away from Lucha Underground. Doesn't sound that interesting. I I implore you, take a look at it. Lucha Underground is so entertaining. And it is though, honestly, honestly, I can say. It's between that and ROH for my favorite, like my favorite show to watch. Mm -hmm. That's why you're doing uh these ones especially. Yep. <clears throat> but uh, even though he did get uh hurt in the beginning, and by the way, the first match was a it's part of a best of five series currently going on, which is very interesting. You don't normally see that. Yeah, there's something WWE did. Um, I think with Booker T and Ben Juan, I think WCW did it as well. Uh, it's a best of five series going on between. Uh, two luchadores, uh, one named Aerostar, and the other who um, I, I it's a personal favorite of mine. I think it's a yeah, it's his personal favorite. favorite of Drago's. As, I mean, not Drago's, a personal favorite of Johnny's as well. His name is Drago. I'm not sure if it is. I don't want to speak for Johnny. Yeah, hey, don't um, speak for me. But uh, they were tied one and one going into the bout, and uh, as Johnny was saying, it's, I I didn't really notice that much. I wasn't. I guess I didn't pay attention. Um, but Aerostar was the wrestler who apparently I guess took a bad hip yeah. toss or something, and um. It give you a little bit of a visual of these guys. Drago has uh is entirely, you know, his he's outfit dragon, is blue and he's got this he's got this weird tongue thing going on. I don't know how he does it, like how they do it, but like the tongue is like a his tongue is like a piece of like putty or something. Yeah, it's like and it like or something. goes down like to like but like below his chin, and it's completely black. It's super cool. It looks really. Weird he'll too, just man. he'll like just flick it out a little bit, and it's super cool. And then Aerostar looks like the White Ranger. Yeah, exactly. He just looks like a Power Ranger. It looks like if you've ever played like a card game, like, and you have those foil cards that you pull in packs of cards, it looks like a foil White Ranger. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you could sell him on eBay for at least fifty dollars. You think so? At least. Yeah, <laughs> at least fifty dollars. <laughs> I mean, he's injured, so he's not in mint condition anymore. No, not mint. Yeah, but he he's heavily, think, he's guess, heavily played. I guess he took a bad, uh, bad hit, and uh, it kind of I mean, slowed him down throughout maybe, the match. But it wasn't. Yeah. It's, it still didn't ruin the match, though. I don't. It, it severely dropped the quality of the match. Um, it, it, knowing how fast he can go, yeah, I guess. Oh, absolutely. But I mean, 
to looking at it objectively. With, there were still some know, pretty cool parts in there. There, there were a few, but uh, like yeah. uh, the one part where um, he kind of walked the ropes. That was yeah, yeah, the, the very end. It was like he did a few good things. It was just like he was. The problem is he got hurt so early into the match. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as like I, like it was extremely early and that really slowed down the entire match. Like there's only a few cool things. Like, yeah, it, and I don't know if like maybe Drago was like holding back a little bit. Sully was hurt. Yeah, like maybe, that yeah, huge. You remember the huge setup? Like there was a huge setup for an Alabama Slam uh, when you know, Aerostar was like hanging it, on the I, third I rope. Even, it was before it that. Bad. It was before that. Oh, I, th I thought I thought even I even yeah. said it looked like, bad, though. Like it was a huge setup. It looked so good, and then the execution was just really poor. And like it kind of honestly, it left me really disappointed. I was just like, oh, that yeah. was supposed to be really cool, but um, well, there was there's another cool terminal spot. Was that by was that Aerostar that did it? That um, uh, the was no, the no not the walking one. The one where um. The one where Drago was like hanging there, like on the outside. Drago was like, Drago had his feet up the like, thing, like, on the second like, on the, the second rope. rope, and then his left arm was grabbing onto the rope, and then Aerostar oh, yeah. just like stomped uh, down on like, like his the chest. Mushroom stomp. Yeah, that was yeah the also mushroom Aerostar. stomp. That was yeah, Aerostar did that one. But uh, probably Aerostar. the best the best part was um, it was like, uh, Drago was set up on one turnbuckle, and then. Uh, uh, Aerostar was set up on the one directly across, not like directly across, but um, perpendicular to it. You know what I'm saying? Across. Yeah. So then he gets up, and you know, you could see he was hurting because he took it really slow. He got there, um, but he ran the second rope, and then he went into a hurricanrana. Yeah. Which was, was cool. which was pretty cool, and then the, and then he got the pinfall there. He, I think he did like a, a springboard splash or something. And then yeah, he may have. He may have. I didn't know. I don't know. Yeah, but uh, Aerostar got the win, boosting, uh, getting yeah, him, so uh, giving him the. He's up the, two to one. Um, two, two to one in the uh, best of five series. So I guess if he your, gets another win, he wins. What were your thoughts on the you know your your Meltzer rating for that uh, match? The match, I don't. I didn't notice the injury like you pointed out, but I I did know that the, it, it wasn't. It wasn't the normal pace we're used to seeing between yeah. uh, between the two, um, but I don't really feel like it held that much back like you do. To be honest, I I still thoroughly enjoyed the match, and I think I think there was a lot of cool spots to make up for it. He, and he fought through it, you know. He still worked through the injury and put on a pretty decent match. Um, I would give it a um, I'd rate it probably in the C's. C region. In the C's. See, I'm going off the. I'm going off the one to five or or one zero five, or occasionally or, one, one, one or occasionally the minus five stars. You know, um, something's that bad. If I was rating it like one to five, you said or one to ten. One to five. One to five. If I was rating it that, I'd I'd, I'd give it a three. It's it's average. It was an average match. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't all it wasn't like blew me away, but it wasn't a match where I was like, oh, stop the match. You know. You see, I I gave it a two. Too. And it was honestly just because of the injury. Like, the if, injury. if he was, if Aerostar was going at full speed, that match would have been very good. But it been a four. like, I a like, fair I, yeah. like I said, that's why you know this is a really awkward episode to start on because they only had really one, one match that in, that yeah, encompasses yeah, the entire mean. lucha style, yeah. and then it was ruined because he got hurt. Now that's not to say that's his fault. I no, mean, he really he happens. toughed it out. He toughed it out. He finished the match, and he, you know it wasn't like. The match, there wasn't, like, many resting parts of the match. There was no, oh, like, rest or, holds or any bullshit like that. It was, it was, it was okay. I wonder what that's going to do for the the rest of the series. I wonder if he's going to... Yeah, I'm very interested fine. to see if, uh, if, you know, maybe, maybe that was a small thing, you know, he may have pulled something or something doesn't, didn't feel quite right, and, you know. Yeah. You know, there's, there's certain freak injuries that you get that you wake up the next morning and everything's fine. Yeah. I don't know. Well, after uh, the match, we had, um, I think it might have been the second or the third. It was the um, second match. What no, no it's, it's not, 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 it, um, no. Um, <laughs> the, it was like the second or the third, it was a, the promo. Uh, the Conan uh, promo. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Conan promo. I, I think it was, it was the second. Like, I think it, it was, was the a, second, too. Oh, yeah. It was just a brief little promo, um, hyping up Conan, and we saw he was, like, playing chess with Prince Puma as well. I'm not sure, and I'm pretty sure Johnny's not even sure, is he returning to the ring? No, uh, no I think. I, although we would love to see him return to the ring, I don't know um, if I would. even though, you know, I, hey, I want to see, him. I, I want to see him at least do. once. But anyway, yeah, I don't know either. Um, it's pretty much because so Prince Puma has been 
getting involved with Cage, yeah. and Cage is a huge bruiser. Prince Poom was the speedster, you know, so Cage can like kind of dominate him. So he was playing chess with Prince Puma, explaining how you can't beat somebody with brute force. Yeah. If they're stronger than you, you I need mean, to I use strategy. That, yeah. So that, I think that's. I them. think it was just mainly a point out to. You're gonna see, and then it had like a little tagline: "Conan Revenge is coming." That's so what you're, you're gonna see, yeah. But I think you're gonna see that. Um, it's gonna be a much different style out of Prince Puma. Um. And I think you might even see Conan doing some direct coaching rather than just like, oh, get him, you know, don't don't stop, you know, keep going. But like you might see him like actually maybe, you know, call yeah. certain things, just be like set him up for X or Y. Yeah. I don't know. It'd be really interesting, but it'd be kind of weird to have like a manager as like a coach at the same time. Like, yeah, well, it works for Conan, I guess. He's bad. Imagine, news, imagine, uh, yeah, imagine like, Brother. imagine like. An NFL team's coach in the huddle playing like quarterback, like that's exactly what it would be like. It'd be pretty awkward. That would be a little weird, huh? Mm-hmm. Um. So after that little promo, we uh, lead on to our next match. We already see uh, the crew. Um, uh, oh God. Cortez, Cortez, Canandra, or whatever the hell. It's his Cor- name is. Cortez Castro, Bale, Cortez, and uh, Mr. Cisco. Cortez Castro, Mr. Cisco, and Bale. Bale, oh my god. god. It's such horrible names for the well, three. Well, let's, let's give some a... background on this first. So, Big yeah, Rick, you know, we're going to be mainly speaking about Lucha Underground as if you've never and, watched um, it before. Uh, Big Rick is Ezekiel Jackson. Yeah, he Big Rick is known as, um, I don't know what he, he was in TNA for a bit. I don't know, I doubt anyone really remembers him from TNA. He was in TNA. Yeah, that's all you need to know, he was in TNA. <laughs> uh, um, but he was known as Ezekiel Jackson from the WB. Um, if you don't remember Ezekiel Jackson, he's actually the last... Um, official ecw world champion isn't that something yeah right. um, he, it's, it's... he managed managed brian kendrick for a little bit was his bodyguard um he wasn't really anything special in wwe to be honest though he's kind of he, he was a former intercontinental champion though and he's a member of the core that was yeah. about it i think that was the only thing i can remember it seems to me that people get a lot more interesting once they leave wwe now uh, a little bit of build up for this uh big rick used to be the leader of the uh the crew that they had they turned on him and then they burned his eye. So now he wears an eye patch. So he's like a fucking pirate now, you know. So he he wrestled against Sexy Star. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Lucha Underground is, has intergender matches from time to time. Um, Seems he, like everybody you know, does that, but WWE. Yeah, he he just kind of shoved her shoulders to the mat, you know, and didn't really like hurt her or anything. But she had a beef with the crew because they injured two of the best superstars on the roster: Pimpy Nella Escarlata, a male that dresses up like a female and kisses the opponent, and Mascarita Sagrada, a little midget that looks like a mixture of all five Power Rangers. That sounds like the best in every any company, right? All right, that's great. But um, <sighs> like. This match, it was a uh, three on one elimination match with no DQ. A uh, three on one. It's not even like tag outs or anything like mm-hmm. that. So it's really weird. But it's Big you know, Rick versus the crew. Yep. You know, so the crew starts going after him. Big Rick holding his own. But then like, Bale's outside the ring and he's just like awkward and out of place. He just looks so lost. And then he dude. grabs a chair and like his name a is chair? Bale. Come on. <laughs> a chair. A chair. I meant to say uh, like I mixed up his name and. A chair, but like, like shell and, for that USC yeah, fighter. Yeah, and like his name is Bale. Like, come on now. None of them have good names, though. <laughs> right. Um, I can't remember who. Uh, I think it was Cisco grabs a kendo stick, and then like hits Rick across the back, and then he just hulks up and he just lets out this primal I think scream. That was Cortez. I'm not sure though. No, 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 it was it was Cisco was it because because he grabs the stick from Cisco and then like beats him with it and then he breaks the stick beating he him beat, with like, it. Like everybody with it, didn't he? Right. Uh, I think specifically Cisco at first. Yeah, he. And then he eliminates Bale. Right. Thank you. Right. Thank you Bale, for eliminating Bale. Bale. God damn it. I mean, he's that trying, match, but he's pointless. Yeah, he's, he's trying. I mean, you know, he, he's he's the guy that he's just he's there. He's um. Bale. He's what's his name of like the three man band when they were around. Jinder Mahal. Yeah, he was Jinder Mahal. Um, so Cisco and Cortez go to uh, suplex Big Rick, but they don't even lift. So, like, Rick reverses it and suplexes yeah. them both at the same time. It's like, come on, come on, Cisco and Cortez, do you even lift? <laughs> Cortez, Cortez gets eliminated. It's one-on-one now. So Cisco says, man, fuck this, I'm out. 
like Cisco just starts going up the concrete steps, and then Sexy Star comes out, you know, because she's got a problem with them, and then punches Cisco, and then Cisco falls down the concrete steps. I thought that was, that was pretty scary, though. I was like, oh, right? God. He fell down the concrete steps, and I'm just like, it's a big flight of stairs. It's not like it's not like five stairs. It's like, no, it's, like it's look good, at like the staircase 20. in the average house. Like, if you live in the average house, look at your staircase. It's probably like a staircase and a half. It's concrete. Uh, you know, that's pretty scary. Um, And then Big Rick is, like, sitting there, you know, with his big right hand and goes full big show. And, like, he straight up punched Cisco. And, like, he busted him open. Like, no blading or anything, I don't think. Like, I don't see where he would have the time to do that. Yeah, I was I was confused, honestly. But he just, he just straight up, he just straight up mollywopped that motherfucker. And then he, uh, he slammed him through a chair with, uh, I don't know what the move is called exactly. Uh, it's kind of like that rock bottom move. Yeah, does. yeah, yeah, it's a little rock bottom. And he slammed him through a steel chair. Yeah, it was, like, right through a steel chair. Um... Yeah. I don't know if you mentioned this, but the way he eliminates Cortez is kind of cool because he had like the cane on his arm and he like closed. Oh yeah, him yeah, with he closed lined him with the uh, with the broken kendo stick. Yeah, I thought that was pretty neat. That was pretty cool. But uh, Big Rick uh, pins Cisco and he gets the win. Yeah. Um, what did you think of the match? Did you like it? I thought it was pretty cool. I thought it was an average match. Um, yeah, I and, thought it was a pretty uh, neat match. It's I mean... just it's the it's the end of the storyline. You know, it gets it gets Big Rick back on the map. Um, after, you know, he was out for, you know, losing fucking an eye or something, whatever. Um, further, just like buries the crew further down. The yeah, way, yeah. I yeah, never but, bought the crew anyway, though, so. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't buy them either. It's, uh, it, they're, they're gonna have to do something else to, uh, just there. to make them interesting. You know, it's just, you see them and it's just like, oh man, that's the crew. Who, but who, you don't, who are you losing you to this week? Yeah, well, it, yeah, it's not even like, oh no, the crew is so bad. Like, they're like. Right. That's they're exactly trying, and it it's not like they're bad performers. It's just they haven't found their identity yet. And once they do, I think they'll be okay at best. But like, if you look at the three guys in the crew, they don't, don't really look like they don't really look like they're going to be anything more than than lower mid carters. I I know I, I I don't know they're they're not they look, they the look like three guys they look like three guys you pick up off the street, yeah, exactly. and it's really funny because they're from. The streets. They are built yeah, from exactly. the streets. Oh uh, three out of five. Three eliminations. Three um, out of five. Is that your rating for the match? Three That's five? my rating. Three out of five. Um, I'm going to give it a 3.5. You're like, crazy. Because I, I liked I liked the uh, the involvement of Sexy Star, and I, I think it was a fun match. I think um, minus Bale looking lost and idiotic. <laughs> that poor um, man. The clothesline with the, the the kendo stick, I thought that was really cool. Mm. And the rock bottom like maneuver through the steel chair, I thought was a cool spot too. So I, I think there was a lot of cool cool ideas in there. I mean, except just the crew is just not really cool. Um, before the main event, we ha- we did get an announcement that next week we're gonna see two title matches. We're gonna see. Oh no no, no we're gonna see one title match. No no no, we're gonna see two. I thought. No, it's the number one contendership for the uh, Lucha Underground Championship match. Remember how? How um, is it a number one contendership? So, so remember how um, he had said they had said something. It was like Cage has I'm to beat Puma for number sure one contendership. Right, on website, I know I'm. I'm I, right I know here, I'm. Right. But it's the website right here is stating it's for the Lucha Underground title. Really? Because it said I know they said there was it's for the a, number one contendership. Maybe they, maybe they called him the number one contender because that's what I thought I heard. I don't know. I, I heard. I, heard, I, heard I thought I heard him said the number one contender. Cage is battling. Um, you might be right. Well, either way, what's being advertised for next week? I don't know if it's going to be for the title or not. It it may or may not be. I'm pretty positive I heard them say two title matches next week. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna look back and. Uh, he, Johnny's gonna double check real quick. About it, but uh, next week they announced two title matches. I'm almost positive. Johnny's gonna confirm. Okay, right. Huh? right. Uh, Prince Puma, who is the current Lucha Underground champion defending his uh, title against Cage, who's been like this monstrous uh, guy. He always says, I'm a, I'm, what does he say? I'm not a, m- a monster, I'm a machine. I think he says something like that. It's kind of stupid because his name is Cage. Either way. Okay, they did call him the number one contender. You're right. So it's going to be for the title. Yes. It is confirmed. Next week, Prince Puma Cage battling in a Boyle Heights street fight, which is just a street fight. It's going to be for the Lucha title. 
Um, I find it interesting because last time we saw the title, it was ripped into pieces, so I'm assuming... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming hoping we're new, a new title. title. And hopefully it doesn't look like a toy this time. And then even bigger than the Lucha Underground title, oh, which I, man. Bet, I bet you guys are like, what, what are you talking about? How are they going to have a match that is bigger than their title? Lucha so Underground so title. Lucha Underground is an affiliate of the Mexican company AAA. And I could not pronounce what it AAA stands for if you asked me to, to be honest. So um, well, if you have insurance through AAA, you could just say that as a little joke if you want. Um, the AAA championship will be defended. Alberto El Padron, who is the champion, and you might not know who he is. That is Alberto Del Rio. Alberto El Patron is uh, Del Rio. I'm and man, he is so it. he is so good outside of WWE. Versus yeah. versus Tejano, who El Tejano is Jr. El Tejano Jr. Who is really apparently like one of the top, like maybe the top guy in Mexico. I think he was like the longest reigning AAA champion. I think yeah, and that. then and then Patron took it from him. Well, Del yeah, Rio. And then, and then I'll Patron forever call him Shadow. I'll yeah. forever call him Del Rio. So so, 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 that, a, so that if you aren't convinced, if you've watched so far next this far, week, you if you're not convinced, you gotta give it a shot. Next like week. this you week, you just gotta do this it. This week, I mean, if if if, if you don't want to, you know, and this one sounds a little lackluster. I understand. Next, I mean, I, I still suggest you watch this just for the main event. We're going to talk about oh, it yeah. for the first oh, yeah. couple seconds. Main event was phenomenal. Um, it was AJ Styles. That's practically what it was. Anyway. You're the phenomenal. Um, but next week, is I, I'd honestly say it's a must-watch because... Well, absolutely. I don't know. I'm not I'm not too familiar with AAA and all that. I'm not sure if it's ever been defended in America, but this might be the first time the AAA title has ever been defended in America. Might be right. I don't know. For, don't quote me. And it's 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 gonna be a bull rope match. I'm not sure exactly what that means. I'm not sure if that means they're gonna be just hitting each other bull rope, or if like they're gonna be, att- at, you know, with a rope attached to their wrist. I'm not sure. But you know week, what? You don't know what it means. If you don't know what it means, watch it, because then you'll exactly. find out. Next week we got two huge world championship matches, and we ended the night with a huge match as well. Was, Great! Uh, it, was, it was a, it was a very good match. I would, yeah, I. I, this, I yeah, you you said you said that this may have been the best uh, casket match you've ever seen. And it was a casket I'd a, match. They I'd agree. It, it was called it Grave Grave Consequences, Consequences match. match. It was Mil Mortes versus Phoenix. Mm-hmm. With, Katarina, Mil- don't forget that. with Katarina, yes. Uh, Katarina, Mil- just for Mortes. anyone, hold on. Katarina, um, for anyone, WB related, um, she was known as um, oh my god, I almost called her Melina Maxine. Maxine. Maxine, she was, uh, you might not know her that well. She was well known for um, NXT and even FCW, which was WWE's developmental territory before NXT. Um, she w- was on WWE for a short amount of time and left because she wasn't being used the way she wanted to. Maybe she would have stayed around for a little bit. She would have been around for this Give Divas a Chance movement, but she's doing pretty well here. Go on, Johnny. Now, this is an interesting match because Mil Mortes was was allied with Katrina. You know, they had a little thing going on, and then she decided to move over to Phoenix. Well, another interesting... So you get a little love triangle going on there. Another interesting thing is Mil Mortes is known as the Man of a Thousand Deaths. Well, Phoenix, as you can tell by his name, is known as the Man of a Thousand Lives in a grave consequences, quote-unquote, casket match. Um, to really, really, I, I'd venture to say this might be the coolest part of the match, even though the match itself was very good. The Day of the Dead entrance they did. Yeah, that was awesome. Now, if you guys don't know, it's it's really hard to explain, but if you don't know what uh, the Day of the Dead is, I mean, to, be, to be honest, or, if you don't or like the, the paint, the is, I'm, I don't know why. Or like why the paint that they kind of use, the paint they kind of use, they kind of look like dead looking people. They bring out a casket, they have the, uh, what did Match Trigger call them? The, uh, the what roses begin with an S? Ceremonial. The, no, the sympathy roses, I think, or sympathy. something. Sympathy. Thank you. You're yeah, right, actually. The sympathy roses, he called them. They, so they brought out a casket. A casket had a big skull on it, right? Uh, yeah, it did have a big yeah, skull. Yeah, it was very cool. 10 out of 10. You know, would, would watch again. Yeah. Um, it was great. So immediately as the match starts, Phoenix is like on the outside. Bill Mortes goes, dives at him, and then slams him into the announce table like almost immediately. And you can hear like the surprise in Mad Striker and Vampiro because they like as soon as they start coming over, they both go, "Oh shit!" and then like they, drop they their headsets. Quite a lot, though, yeah, they said match. shit a lot. It's, it's, like, it's like they got away with it the first time, so they're like, "Oh, let's just keep doing yeah. it." I don't know. I mean, I don't care, but it was just like, "Oh my gosh." 
And uh, interesting, a little funny thing. Mil Mortes hits Phoenix with a cross. Mil Mortes is the man of a thousand deaths. Why didn't he, like, burn when he touched the cross? Are you kidding me? Like, Burn the witch. Yeah, right? Um, Phoenix uh, Phoenix tries to dive through the uh, second rope, and then Mil Mortes, who was on the outside, stands up the coffin. Oh, that was And then Phoenix part. just, boom, head first. And then he rips off, like, he didn't, like, rip it off, but, like, he tore Phoenix's mask and, like... Yeah, it was, like, like half, it was, like, yeah, like, half. You could, you could pretty much see Phoenix's entire yeah, he face. He was just bloodied. Um, no, here's, here's how he got bloodied. So, Mil Mortes unscrews the turnbuckle piece... That's right. ...that keeps it together with, like, the ring post. So, like, half of the bottom rope is now, like, irrelevant to the match. And then he just hits him right in the head, and he just starts... He just he gets busted wide open, and then he bites him. He bites him. Ugh. He bites Phoenix in the open wound, Numerous and then he's times. and then we'll talk more about that later. And he, he spits out the blood, and I'm sitting here like, whoa, okay, that that was that was pretty cool. Like that was pretty cool. Mm. So the fight goes up the stairs. They're on top of like an overhang, and like. Uh, Mil Mortes is about to suplex Phoenix off. Phoenix starts fighting back, and then, like, he throws Phoenix up in the air, and he hits an air vent. Yeah, I remember And that. then he, f- yeah, <laughs> and it was just, like, a huge, like, doom noise. And then, like, cool. he falls down the wooden stairs. And then, again, Phoenix gets powerbombed on the announce table. Another oh shit moment from the commentators, right, and now they're apparently complaining that they're covered in blood. Yeah. Um, but the crowd is like super into it at this point. Like before this point in the night, the crowd wasn't really like they were. They were Lucha Underground has really good crowds, but tonight they weren't as into it. But then this match really got them into it. Um, the casket gets set up in the ring, and then Phoenix gets suplexed onto the coffin and dents it. Like, but like, I, after after that happens, Mil Mortes bites Phoenix again. Like in the spot where he's bleeding, it's not like he's biting him on the ear like fucking yeah, Mike Tyson. Gross, man. He's biting him in the spot that he's bleeding, and I'm like, Didn't like the way off. I would say, I'm like, this motherfucker's like a fucking zombie, spitting out more blood. I almost puked, and I'm kind of getting a little nauseous just thinking about it. Yeah, dude, it was like he had it in his mouth, and it was like dripping down. It was just gross. It was like, yeah, dude. yeah, I'm like, come on, like that's unsanitary at that yeah, point. Yeah, it's like way too. They much. they fight, and, yeah, and they start fighting like deep into. a part of the crowd that we never even knew was there and then like no Mortes just throws a wooden chair right into phoenix's face like multiple times Yeah, that was hardcore man that, that, yeah. oh my gosh that, that looked like it would hurt so, so they get back to like the the direct outside of the ring like from the crowd and then phoenix gets his head slammed into the what matt sugar would call the rusty iron gates multiple times that was cool too man there was a lot of cool parts to be honest yeah, this and then you no know, Phoenix is Phoenix was like completely out of the match. Really, he starts he's trying to fight back, and then like he ducks a clothesline, and Mil Mortes clotheslines Katarina. Yeah, oh my lord, she took uh, so a Mil bump. Mort- yeah, she took a huge bump, and like Mil Mortes is not a small guy. No, dude, he's huge. Mil Mortes is pretty built. Now, he gets distracted, and Phoenix hits an enziguri, and then like Mil Mortes gets control, and guess what he does? He fucking stops. He's not doesn't stop. He starts biting fucking Phoenix again. <laughs> like I'm just sitting here, like oh my god, what the f-? like? It is getting really disgusting at that point, and I'm gonna be honest, it really, really affected my judgment of this match. It really, really that bad? Yes. One time is cool. Two times it's like, what are you doing? And then you overdid it. Yeah, like, always. there's just such thing as too much. Um, and Katarina, Katarina gets up after a little while, and then she opens the coffin, and they're both like, one's like on the ropes, and the other one's like on the apron, and nobody really knows who Katrina is like allied yeah, with. Is working with, you know, yeah. Yeah, like, they, everybody's just like, yeah, she's with Phoenix. Like, she used to be with Mil Mortes, so you're expecting, a, like, a huge twist. But, um, uh, Phoenix goes off the top rope and mushroom stomps, um, Mil Mortes into, into the, uh, yeah, into the open coffin. And then Mil Mortes has this, like, stone of power that Katrina always carried around, and then he started carrying it around after she left. And, like, her entire thing, right? Is after the end of like mad at the end of matches when she was with Mil Mortes, she would lick 
who he beat. It's gross, though. Like, literally lick. Like, maybe, like, there were a few times she, like, licked on, like, the mouth. But, like, there was this one time where she was with Phoenix, and then she, he beat Mil Mortes, and then she licked from, like, his, like, belly button all the way up yeah. to his... Ugh. It's just... They're so after sweaty. After a match, after a match. Yeah, like, they're after so sweaty at that point. Like, ugh, golly. Yeah. Uh, so so she, uh, she goes full Miley Cyrus and licks the Stone oh, of God. Power. Throws it at Mil Mortes and closes the coffin, and Phoenix wins the match. Mm-hmm. That was your basic rundown of the match. It was a great was match, a great I'm not match. gonna lie. But there's there's a few things that held it back, and I, I, I'm gonna give it a four, and probably have the unpopular opinion here. I'm. I'm gonna give it a four out of five. I'm not gonna give it a five. It wasn't a perfect match. I said I said before that I I do think. Uh, that this might be the greatest casket match I've ever watched, and I haven't watched many casket matches, so uh, that, that I haven't either, to be fair. Not, that, but that, I completely that, agree with you in your sentiment. Yeah, it, it was a great casket match, dude. It was a lot. It was a lot. It, I think the problem with most casket matches is there's so much focus on the casket, whereas yeah, the, this one didn't have much focus. Two was, it was that's my objective. I need to put him in this, but I'm gonna mess this guy up first. It was a great. There was match. literally there was there were two casket bumps. There were the one where he threw and it up were, as Phoenix was trying DDT. to dive out of the ring. And the other, oh yeah, the DDT, that happened really early yeah. in the match. That was a pretty cool one. But that one wasn't like super memorable. I remember. But it was, I don't feel like it was just like a wow moment like the other two were. Because the other one, the other one he dented the I casket. I feel like this uh, casket match was probably the most innovative casket match ever though. Oh, absolutely. Because it's kind of like when you go back and watch Shawn Michaels versus Razor Ramon. They did something, and still to this day, that no other man has done with the ladder match. These two did something that no other man has done with the casket match, and it worked. I would yeah. rate this match probably a four as well. Mm-hmm. I'd probably rate it around a four. I think, yeah, I think it was for my. It was too one sided for my tastes, even though Phoenix won. Yeah, and the, and the blood. Um, it was blood it was a little too one sided and. Like the, it, it's it, not like, the blood. It's not the blood, but it's, held it's it back. It was the, the biting. That, yeah. It was the biting. Like, yeah, it's, it's that shit is not, it's not like yeah. once once it's pretty like it's like whoa. Yeah. The second time it's like, Ugh, and then it's the third little, time it's, it's just gross. Like, it's like you're doing it too much, dude. It's grossing me out now. I get it. <laughs> but um, yeah. Overall, um, what do you think of the show overall? Like, I thought, I thought the show was. I thought the show was okay. Um, it was. The the casket match sh- saved the show, mm-hmm. without a doubt. Definitely, if it wasn't for um, the casket match, I would it was it probably would be you know an eh. and maybe I mean I mean here's the thing the, the, well. if Aerostar also didn't get hurt in that very first yeah, match, just unfortunate like, for him. yeah, the worst match of the night would have been Big Rick versus the Crew, that which wasn't was probably going to be that bad of a match. For... Yeah, that wasn't that bad, but like it was also like it was it wasn't great either. Predictable result. Yeah, it was it was it was just like, literally like let's end this it, now. But the best thing about this is, like, you look at these three matches, if you've watched Lucha Underground before, the only really predictable match was Big Rick versus The Crew. Like, you didn't know if Mil Mortes was going yeah, to beat Phoenix. We didn't know who or you didn't that. know, you don't know it with Drago and Aerostar since it's a best of five. Yeah, unless you looked up spoilers yeah. and shit like, like that. You're going you're gonna to assume it's going to go to five, but who knows? Maybe Aerostar wins the next yeah, one. You and, know. you know, Aerostar goes 3-1. You know? It'd just be really, really interesting. Yeah, I would say um, if it wasn't for the casket match, and I mean I don't really like saying this because I love wrestling, but um, I would say this is to be something you could just skip over because the big Rick crew feud was it was it was inevitable. We already knew who was gonna win yeah. before even this match started. Um, the Aerostar um, Drago match, even if it was a, a great match, it's not something. And if it was a great match, it'd be different. But because it's such a slow match. It, it's not like it's the final in the five series, so it's something you can easily miss. The casket match, though, because it's on there, I would say that's a reason why you need to watch this. Because as I said before, this might be the best casket match ever, and it's kind of a shame that it might not get as, that much acknowledgement for it. Either way, I'm excited about next week though with Lucha Underground. I'm ex- mm-hmm. I'm excited to see Cage and Puma. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have watched Lucha Underground. Both of them are uh, stellar athletes, especially Cage. He, he, for a guy his size, you never expect him to do the things he does. And 
the fact that we're going to see the AAA title on the line and, and we're going to see two of Mexico's greatest wrestlers and someone we already know, we are El Patron, we know him as so well. It's going to be great. It's going to be a great show. I can't wait to review that. But um, you got anything to add, Johnny? Um, not not really. All right, so that's uh that's gonna be the end of the. It's a good show. It's, it's gonna be the end of this uh, review of Lucha Underground. Uh, next time you see me and uh Johnny here, we're probably gonna be talking about ROH. Um, let us know in the uh comment section what you guys figured about Lucha Underground. Your opinions on uh Lucha as a whole. Your opinions on this show or anything else you want to share about Lucha Underground and or any other wrestling. I'm curious to hear anybody's opinion on anything. Uh, my name, of course, was uh, Stephen Pym, otherwise known as OMG, WTF, LOL, FDW, BRB. With me is um, Do It For Lucky. You can check him out on uh, League of Legends, otherwise known as the Greek God of professional wrestling, John Olympian. And uh, this was our review of Lucha Underground. We'll see you next week for uh, the big one between the uh, yeah. two world champions, basically. So uh, until then, you guys have a good one.